Hi, my name is Heather Porter, and I'd like to welcome you to my podcast, Animisma, All Things Inspirited. This podcast seeks to offer you a journey home, home to the wisdom of your ancestors, whose face you wear and whose knowing is encoded in your bones, home to your true self, who you were before the passage of this human life offered you its distractions or placed upon you its obligations, expectations and challenges, or perhaps deeply conditioned and wounded you. Animisma is a journey home to who you were born to be, a sovereign, complete child of the universe, that is, a whole, healthy, and well human. This journey home to our magnificent, beautiful true selves provides us with an opportunity to be at peace with whoever we are at this moment, in this time. It is an honorable endeavor and allows us to connect more presently and more deeply with the waters, lands, plants, spirits, and people we share space with. My heart hope is that as you join me on these journeys and explorations, your true self is gently revealed to you in all its grace and in revealing itself to you serves as your own soul compass, a guide providing you with an opportunity to discover what it feels like to walk deeply and beautifully aligned with the exquisite and resilient core of your being. It is my belief that the path of self-discovery is the path of integrity and therefore does not deny your shadow, your pain, or your hidden or wounded parts, but welcomes them forward in service of revealing to you the deepest work that needs to be addressed. I believe it is your birthright to be whole, complete, unburdened, and free. Many today feel we are living in a time of forgetting and a time of confusion, But there are still people who seek to remember, people who seek to share the sacred in our everyday lives, people who believe that everything around us is inspirited, and who seek to offer ways of connecting deeply and authentically with the untamed beauty and wildness of our hearts and the magnificence of our shared world. These people seek honorable connections to the lands they live on, the waters they swim in, and the winds that surround them. They seek to learn the wisdom of the myriad beings that we share this precious life with, and they seek to honor the wisdom of their ancestors, be they from bloodlines, that is blood relatives, spirit lines, that is the ancestry of your spirit or soul, or milk lines, that is the lines that have nourished you, though aren't related to you, such as chosen family, teachers, authors, step-parents, etc. I am one of those seekers, and animism is my offering as a journey home to your own wise and magnificent heart light, and I offer this as a bridge of authentic spiritual connection, offered with honor, and offered in peace. Welcome to Animisma, all things inspirited. I'm thrilled that you're here. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the spring or vernal equinox. In 2020, the equinox falls on March 19th, which is the earliest it has been for over a hundred years. It often falls on March 20th or 21st, and it won't fall on March 21st again until the year 2101. As the northern hemisphere tilts towards the sun, the days begin to lengthen and the sun turns towards the north. We officially welcome the spring and all that it represents. Freshness, green shoots, bird song, warmer days, and cleansing rains. Today, the light and the dark, the day and the night, are conceptually equal. There is a beautiful balancing quality to the equinox and its gifts of day and night, held in dynamic equality, that offer us an opportunity to reflect on our own sense of balance. In context for those that are listening from the future, here in 2020, we are currently experiencing a rather large tensing of the social fabric of our culture. A virus is spreading very quickly around the world and is proving to be rather harmful to one particularly vulnerable population, the elderly. Public authorities are urging social distancing and quarantine in hopes of stemming the curve of transmission of this highly contagious virus. Many are heeding this request and this warning, and many are ignoring it. Many consider it simply responsible to not expose themselves, lest they become a carrier and transmit the illness to someone who is vulnerable or who has a compromised immune system. And then there are many who simply feel they are either above the system or that communal health is not their responsibility. 
If there is one thing that is true, my health, your health, the health of our families and friends, the health of our co-workers and those we rely on to grow our food, ship our goods, and manage the infrastructure of our cities, that is, water, waste, and energy, all of our health is codependent. We are equally responsible for our community as a whole, and the approach of individualism, of singular concern, has no place when it comes to the healing of the world and the collective health of humanity. We are now, and always have been, part of a deeply connected world, and it is times like these that shine a light on how brilliantly interdependent we are. For though many are experiencing the fear and shadow that is revealed by a collective consciousness that has compromised its strength and sovereignty, we can also see, potentially, the wonders of what we can actually achieve together in service of a well-earth and subsequently well-humans if we just gently tapped into the magnificence of the global community we are a part of and focused on the healing we, each of us, needs to undertake. I am by trade an environmental scientist who studied at an advanced level a great deal of sciences in order to understand and then share about the web of connectivity we are a part of. I also supplemented that study by going back to school, back to academia, to obtain a Master of Environmental Law in hopes that by understanding policy and legal mechanisms that govern and influence the world today, I could understand and offer more space and insight into all that connects us. My studies included natural hazards and hazard management and the study and impact of pathogens. I worked for many years providing strategic insight and support to organizations looking to mitigate and minimize impacts from factors beyond their control and to strengthen their organization's response by developing organizational resiliency in the face of change, particularly significant change. So, as part of my offering into the cauldron of change and transformation that we are experiencing today and in service of this spring equinox, where the balance of light and dark is upon us, I offer you some pathways to your own inner resiliency via some visualizations and meditations based on the following. Number one, grounding in service of releasing fear by deepening into and connecting with the wisdom of your wise and well ancestors, those that might have witnessed plagues and experienced plagues, famine, wars and despair and survived it such that you could be brought into existence. And two, breathing into your heart to support your nervous system, especially if it, if it is experiencing heightened levels of stress, because if there's one thing we know, stress compromises the immune system. So I thank you for taking the time to listen through the seriousness of my first message. And I invite you now to Go ahead and pour a nice cup of grounding tea, preferably something immune boosting at this time if you have it, and take a moment to get truly comfortable and gift yourself with some space to rest and relax during this time of challenge and change. Given that it is the spring equinox, or equinox, the celebration of balance, I also want to honor the passage of this podcast by briefly touching, ever so briefly, touching on the Celtic law of the season. For the Celtic wheel of the year, this celebration is sometimes referred to as Ostara. Ostara or Eostra is the name of an obscure goddess of the spring whose historical origins are often questioned and who was thought to have originated among the proto-Germanic tribes stemming from the word, I think it's Ostro, meaning dawn. Eastra is a goddess of the dawn, another name for her, both literally and figuratively, with dawn being used as a metaphor for the death of winter and the lengthening of days. Each year, she is thought to retreat to the underworld for the duration of winter and is reborn anew each spring, bringing with her fertility and abundance. Though her origins may be questioned, I feel that her celebration at spring is welcomed. The beautiful goddess of the dawn, returning to bless us with freshness, flowers, water and warmth. 
Some say that she is capricious and can turn from warm to solemn in an instant, a reflection of the unpredictability of spring weather. For me, given this time in the passage of human history, I lovingly welcome any deity, thought form, or spiritual gift who brings comfort in the form of greenery, flowers, and warmth. She who can walk beside us or sit with us at our hearth as we ground, breathe, and deepen into the understanding of what challenge truly is and the wisdom and freedom offered through change. She who can offer us balance through her dawn light as we navigate the shadows of either our own or the collective's fears and thoughts. Let's explore balance together. When I say the word balance, where does it live within you? How does it make you feel? What do you think of or see in your mind's eye? For me, when I feel into the concept of balance, I first experience the elements inside of me. Not a duality of light and dark or day and night, but a dynamic interplay, the living dance of fire, water, earth, air and essence or ether or sacred space that our human vessels, which is how I refer to our human bodies, experience. I see these elements in their integral forms, enlivening my system, and I explore them to see which, if any, needs increasing or decreasing. The equinox is truly a beautiful, arguably perfect time to assess the balance of our systems within and our lives without. Do your spirit, heart, and mind feel harmonized? Where do you spend your time? Either physically, mentally, spiritually, or all of the above? Do you find yourself constantly sending your thoughts out into the vast reaches of potentiality, such that you feel pulled from your body and this present moment? Or are your thoughts so deeply locked into the present that dream and possibility have no space? Does your body need tending? Does your heart need mending? Does your spirit seek to be nourished? Are you overwhelmed with fire? Do you feel afflicted or stuck? Or do you feel like you're inside of a tornado? Do you feel organized? Do you feel rested? Do you feel like you need to move more? Or does stillness and rest call to you? There are quite literally hundreds of questions that could be asked in service of inquiry and assessing one's sense of balance. However, I believe, as do many of my colleagues and peers, that in order to truly understand balance, the answer lies in the subtle energy field and not in our thinking mind. The answers, as always in my opinion, lie in the heart voice. For those of you listening from America, that's the heart voice. Friends, family, colleagues, the culture we live within, the popular media and the world at large often tell us elaborate, powerful and false stories about how, why, where and who we are as a tool of manipulation. So we hide bury and bypass the truths of our being in response, including, but not limited to, what we each need individually to live in a more healthful and balanced way. We sacrifice the power of our sovereign choices up to leaders and corporations who do not act from a heart space. We slowly then forget who we are and who we were before we agreed to give them our power. Our power and strength lie in reclaiming ourselves from the grips of false narratives, from unwinding beliefs and attaching from false stories so we can live freely as we choose, unburdened and from the seat of our own strength. The subtle pathways that can be revealed to us when we lucid dream, shamanic journey, meditate, body track, etc. offer our personal truths, our heart voices, an opportunity to quietly reveal themselves. These truths are not competitive. They are not egoic. They do not have an agenda. They are not sourced from wounds of the past. And they do not need to prove anything. These truths, your true self, your true heart, your essence self, 
is only seeking the chance to be heard by you and in all hope be honored by you through your choices and your actions. So today, on this vernal equinox, as the trees awaken and the leaves begin their growth for the year, I ask you to take space, even just for a few minutes, to lovingly release the stories your parents, friends, family, the media, frankly, anyone outside of you, even me, has told you. And via your breath, seek to slowly feel and see with your mind's eye and your heart's eye what you need, just you, in order to live a more balanced and true life in this moment. Let's start by taking three deep, grounding breaths together. Feel the earth below you, holding you. Close your eyes and imagine the warmth of dawn light quietly meeting your face, gently warming your skin. Breathe in the freshness of the dawn air, feeling the earth steadying you below, warmed by morning light. Breathe in and out. In and out. See yourself in a space that is safe and beautiful. It could be a sunny garden or a mesa lit by golden dawn light. Maybe you're by a mountain stream or walking along a palm tree lined beach. Wherever you are, check in and make sure that you feel calm, held, safe and strong. If you work with allies, guides or helping spirits, invite one to join you as a guardian and companion today. Greet your spirit with a smile and an offering of thanks. Today, we invite a single, wise, compassionate, and well ancestor who experienced and survived a natural challenge such as famine, war, plague, or a natural disaster to join us. They can come from any line of your family or spirit. Ask them to sit with you and to share any advice they have on navigating what we are currently experiencing in 2020. How did they survive? I'm going to drum for a few minutes to give you space to connect with your ancestor. You may not see them, only hear them, or perhaps gather a sense or understanding of their experience. There is no right way to do this, only your way. If you don't connect with anyone, enjoy your safe haven and continue to breathe deeply, feeling the earth below you while I drum. Just remember, you are safe, you are held, you are seen, and you are valued. And most importantly, you are loved. Let's begin.
Thank your ancestor and your guardian companion for joining you today. When you're ready, return your thoughts to your body and place a hand over your heart. If that's difficult for you, I invite you to send your awareness to your heart space. This time, let's take some deep, nourishing breaths and breathe from your heart. See your heart filled with light as you breathe and see that light expanding gently, softly and slowly until you are surrounded by light. Once surrounded with your mind's eye, see the heart lights of everyone you know as you breathe taking your time. Expand your own light to connect with their heart lights. Once connected, see the heart lights of all who you don't know. And as you breathe in and out, expand your own magnificent heart light to connect with theirs. Keep breathing in and out, radiating from your heart and see the heart lights of all the beings we share this beautiful earth with. See the whales and the sharks See the tigers and the trees. See the lights deep in the earth as millions of earthworms move through their days. See the heart lights of the bees and the light of every flower they visit. As you breathe and expand your heart light out of your home, connecting with all you know, expanding to connect with all you don't know, and expanding to connect with all of the sentience, expand the magnificence of your heart light to cover the earth, and take a moment to see the earth from a distance sparkling with the heart lights of a trillion sentient beings. Breathe deeply in gratitude for your life and all lives. Breathe deeply into your heart and know that this light and this practice is always available for you. It is a practice of connection and gratitude rooted in that most humble and magnanimous of energy centers, that of our hearts. Gently and slowly in your own time, come back to focus on your own heart and its light and its strength and take three final breaths. In closing today, I invite you to stay with the trouble, as Donna Haraway suggests, in a grounded and clear way so you can find an opening within yourself, even if it is the tiniest crack in an inner doorway, to support you in understanding that it is in fact through sitting with and staying with the challenge of our times that community-based careful, resilient solutions can be found both within and therefore outside of ourselves. I have a question for you. I am an animist after all, so I feel compelled to ask it. What if this illness has a spirit? 
What if the spirit of this illness is an envoy from Mother Earth, perhaps demanding our awakening and deepening into our human and non-human communities? I was struck by something that was shared by Annette Host. She said maybe from a shamanic or animistic point of view, we could look at the coronavirus, that's COVID-19 that we are currently experiencing, as a giant force of nature, a determined envoy from Mother Earth. Someone that we need to have deep respect for, just like the giants of the old, the Jotun. Actually, I think you say it, Jotun, who hold the world in balance. Still, with giants, we also need to keep out of harm's way. Bypassing, gleaming, glossing over or ignoring the issue will not resolve that which we are collectively facing. Rooting in our own strength, sitting with our ideas, concepts and fears around the illness and the world's response to it, and at the same time showing up for yourself and your community's needs are healthful ways of responding at this time. If you feel fear, I have an invitation for you. Perhaps you can sit with it and welcome it to your table. It's not to be pushed away, but a voice of concern that needs your care and attention. Feel into it. Where do you come from, fear? Can fear see you as strong and capable? An adult who is ready to take care and do what needs to be done? Can it see that you take seriously its warnings around your immune system and your need to be safe at this time? Can it know that you're ready and willing to ask for support if you need it, whether it's resources, transport, medicine, or connection? Can you assure your fear that you will not be alone through this, that you will reach out and ask for connection and support when you need it? Fear is an important part of our body deva, our emotional and soul wisdom, and all our parts are welcome to join us. Let's make space and time for them to reveal to, reveal to us what they see and to connect to them because they require it. Through connection, may your fear be heard and your nervous system grounded so that you may fortify your immunity and weather this time in health and wellness. I, of course, also deeply encourage partnering with the plants if you haven't already. Their medicine is holistic, grounding and powerful. Now is a perfect time to remember what your bones already know, that you're surrounded by allies in the plant world and in honoring them and partnering with them, there is so much health and connection to be gained. Herbalists around the world are heeding the call for communal support, just as healers and seers are making themselves more available for insight, grounding and connection right now. I've been blessed already to support a number of beautiful clients through this time, and the wonder of this work is that it can be effectively and lovingly completed online. Please do not hesitate to reach out to me via the Connect section or the Individual Sessions page of my website. I'm offering flexible rates given this time of need and will be honored to support you in navigating and grounding. My website is www.thepathofintegrity.com. With gratitude for the balance of all life and the wisdom revealed when the scales are tipped, I wish you wellness and I see you in health, supported by your allies, fortified in the resplendent strength of your own heart, connected to community. You are not alone. You are never alone. With so much love, Heather. Special thanks today to Annette Host, Rachel Weitz, Juniper Stokes, Danielle Karen, Joanna Giller, Donna Haraway, 
and Julie Kramer. To you, my listener, wherever and whenever you are, whether you are here with me in 2020 or listening from the future, I honor the spirits of the land that you are on and the land that I am on, and I gratefully acknowledge all who come in spirit form to be of support, to provide guidance and wisdom, and to hold us while we connect with the spirit of the earth and her seasons through these beautiful festivals. I wish you health, I wish you wellness, and I wish you space to be able to connect with the beautiful spirit of Ostara and the spring equinox.